Since the advent of humanity, while ancient civilizations did not have maps or advanced meteorology, a way of locating and predicting fertile times for crops was discovered in the night sky. But constellations. But how could these symbols in the sky help people in those tasks? How were the constellations defined? What is their use these days? This and much more we'll discover now. Welcome to Nebula! Constellations are not just patterns formed by the stars in the sky, they are much more than that. In astronomy, the meaning attributed to the word constellation refers to a rectangular area of the sky where this pattern is located. In this area, there are other stars beside those that make up the figure that names it. These rectangular areas serve to facilitate the location of the stars in the sky and to improve communication between astronomers from all over the world. For this system to work, there is a regulation of the International Society of Astronomy to define which are the existing official constellations. It's worth mentioning that the stars that make up a constellation are not physically close. Actually, they are just apparently close in the celestial sphere, but located at different distances to the Earth. The distance between stars and Earth can interfere with how bright we see them in the sky. But that's not all. This brightness depends on two factors, its distance from Earth and how brightly the star shines, which is called its abyssal magnitude. To understand this better, imagine a lantern and a lighthouse. They will represent two stars. The lighthouse has abyssal magnitude greater than that of the lantern, because if they are being seen side by side from the same distance, the light from the lighthouse will be greater for the observer. In case the lighthouse is many kilometers away from the observer, so that it is almost impossible to see its lights, and the lantern is a few centimeters from the observer, it can be said, in this case, that the brightness of the lantern is greater than that of the lighthouse. Therefore, we define brightness as a characteristic that can change depending on the distance from the object, while absolute magnitude is a property of the object and does not vary with distance. When ancient civilizations observed the constellations, they were not used to study the stars or the like. These societies didn't even know what those little dots in the sky that formed the patterns were. At first, each civilization used the patterns of the night sky for different things. The Egyptians used it to know how long it would take for the next Nile's flood. The Inuit in the north to know when the sun would return. The Aboriginal peoples of Australia to set the playback cycle for Rias, etc. Each observation was tailored to the needs of the people who made them. This is how the early study of astronomy began, the observation of the sky to get humanity through space and time. It is not by chance that many people have their first contact with astronomy by observing the starry sky. The first astronomers also saw value on this habit. This simple gesture helped humanity to develop the sedentary way of life, which contributed to the formation of human society as it is today. In addition to the drawings formed by the stars, the observations of some peoples focus on other elements of the sky, as is the case with the Incas. These people guided themselves through the dark constellations, which are nothing more than figures formed by the dark clouds of the Milky Way. Don't be afraid of the name, we will explain this now. Have you ever come across an image of the starry sky where there seems to be a big cloud among the constellations? That cloud is a part of the Milky Way. The backbone of the night, as Carl Sagan would say, ends up not being so familiar to everyone, since with the light pollution of cities, it is not possible to see it. The Incas were able to see animal shapes in the darkest part of these clouds and attribute to these images the arrival of a new time of the year. When you saw a llama, it was the time of the llama's birth. When the snake and the frog appeared, it was the wet season and so on. It is important to remember that the constellations will not always be the same. As we know, the universe is constantly expanding, which results in an ever-increasing distance between objects in the universe. This impacts directly on the constellations. As much as we want to be here to see it, the designs in the sky will change due to constant separation of the stars, which will cause the patterns to be undone. Of course, we will only be able to notice these changes many years after they happen, because the life from the stars takes time to reach the Earth. So when we look at a star that is 600 light years away, we are seeing it as it was 600 years ago. 
Mystical ideas were also attributed to the constellations, but these ideas stand in the field of astrology when it was separated from astronomy, which followed with the study of the sky in a scientific way. When we talk about constellations that influenced our personalities, for example, or in the branch of astrology that inherited this ancient mysticism, each civilization had different constellations as they reflect both cultural and everyday life aspects of the people who used them. You can't say you are seeing a llama-shaped constellation if you don't even know what one is. This difference ended up hindering the study of the sky by people from different cultures, so much so that in the 19th century, there were more than 100 constellations and many of them referred to the same location in the sky. To solve this problem, at the first General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union, which took place in Rome in 1922, a list of 88 official constellations was defined that would be used internationally by the astronomical community to facilitate communication and exchange of knowledge. However, this list only talked about the designs. The borders of the constellations that delimited their area were only defined in 1928 and approved in 1930. These lists and boundaries are the same ones we use nowadays to guide the struggle skies, along with a system of sky coordinates. The edges of the constellations are rectangular and look a lot like puzzle pieces that form the celestial sphere when put together. We can classify the constellations into three types, namely seasonal, zodiacal, and circumpolar. Remember, the best way to learn about these constellations and understand them is to look at the night sky. Seasonal constellations are constellations that can only be seen at certain times of the year because of their location in the sky. Most constellations are seasonal, such as the constellation of Orion, which is seen during the summer in the southern hemisphere. To get a better sense of when these constellations can be seen, you can divide a star sky map into four sections, each of which represents a season of the year. Perhaps being the best known, the zodiacal constellations are the 13 constellations that are on the sun road from our point of view. If we draw a line in the sky where the sun passes during the year, 13 constellations will be crossed by this line. These are the zodiacal constellations. The zodiacal constellations names are Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Ophiuchus. The circumpolar constellations are those that can be seen throughout the year as they move around the celestial pole of their respective hemispheres, south or north. Because they are constellations that are very close to the celestial poles, it is not possible to observe them from all over the world. If you are in the southern hemisphere, you will not be able to observe the circumpolar constellations of the northern hemisphere and vice versa. Regardless of the hemisphere, if you are closer to the equator, it will not be possible to observe these constellations. The southern circumpolar constellations are Carina, Centaurus and Crux, which revolve around the south celestial pole. The northern circumpolar constellations are Cassiopeia, Cepheus, Draco, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor which circle the star called Polaris, which indicates the North Celestial Pole. It wouldn't make any sense for you to watch this whole video to learn about constellations and not try to identify some in the sky, don't you think? That's why we separate some constellations that are easy to identify, both for those who observe the southern sky and for those who observe the northern sky. Starting with one of the best known constellations, Crux. This is a circumpolar constellation, and to identify it, you must look for the four points of a cross in the sky. To make sure you found this constellation and not the false cross, since there is a group of four stars that looks like the crux, we also have a star called Intrusive, which is just below one of the arms of the cross, thus totaling the five stars of this constellation. If you extend the size of the constellation four and a half times from its bottom point, you will find the South Celestial Pole, which unlike the North Celestial Pole, does not have a star or anything like that, but is the region in which the whole sky revolves around. Another constellation with a very simple format is the Solter Triangle. It is a constellation characterized by three stars that form somewhat of the shape of Scalene Triangle which is often confused with an isosceles triangle because the size of its sides are similar when seen in the sky, but in reality they have different sizes. 
This is considered a modern constellation because it was cataloged at the end of 16th century by navigators, so it does not have any mythology associated with other older constellations, such as those of the Zodiac, for example, which have bases in Greek mythology. One of the most famous constellations is also in the Southern Hemisphere, Orion. The name of this constellation comes from the legend of a Greek hunter. Orion is a constellation that is simple to identify. First try to locate three stars very close in, in a row. This is Orion's belt, or the three sisters. Now, there are four more stars. To locate them, try to find four stars that seems to be a vertex of a slight crooked rectangle that imprisons the three sisters. Here's it. We have found the constellation of Orion, the hunter. Possibly the most famous constellation in the Northern Hemisphere, the Big Dipper or Ursa Major is a circumpolar constellation that can be seen all around in the Northern Hemisphere, being most visible during the months of January to October. It has seven bright stars that are easy to identify. To locate it, first find a crooked rectangle. At one end of this rectangle, you can find three stars that seem to form a tail, but are not aligned. For the exact purpose, the constellation Ursa Major resembles a pot because of its shape. In 600 before the Common Era, the Greek astronomer Thales of Miletus defined the constellation Ursa Minor, also known as Little Car. As much as it doesn't have such bright stars in the night sky, does not being such a simple constellation to observe, at the tip of the tail of Ursa Minor is Polaris, the star that marks the North Celestial Pole. Location in the sky where the stars of the celestial dome make their apparent movement. The constellation Ursa Minor resembles a spoon with a bent handle. Many legends from Greek mythology surround this constellation. In one version, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor are mother and daughter, respectively. In other legends, there is an explanation for why Ursa Minor appears to have a long tail, unlike common bears. This legend says that Ursa Minor would be stuck by the tail in the sky and because of its weight, the tail would have enlarged during the apparent rotation of the sky around Polaris. Being one of the simplest constellations of all, the constellation Canis Minor has only two clearly visible stars. In legends, Canis Minor is said to be one of Orion's hounds. It also has a companion constellation in the southern hemisphere, the Canis Major. This brother has the star Sirius, the brightest in the sky, on his collar. If you got interested in some constellation but can't find it in the sky, you can try to use the software called Stellarium that can help you to observe the sky or even see constellations from anywhere in the world. Modern life, especially in cities, has brought a lot of comfort and technological advances to humanity, but it has also brought many forms of pollution, of course. Beach, air, water, or noise pollution, all of them have been intensified by the urbanization process. But there is a type of pollution that is not much talked about, but it is taking away our ability to admire the stars of the night sky from the comfort of our homes, the light pollution. If you live in an urban center, you must have already seen images of the night sky on the internet that seem to show many stars and even a part of the Milky Way. But when you try to observe it in the sky outside your house, you could not even see half of it, just the sky with few stars that were even harder to notice. This is the effect of light pollution. Due to excess of lights in the city, the little light that takes thousands of years to reach the Earth from the stars ends up being overshadowed by this artificial lightning. This causes many people to spend their whole lives without really seeing the starry sky in all its splendor. A splendor that led humanity to develop and create the society full of technological advances that we see today. The photos you must have seen were taking places far away from cities, where there is no light pollution. This is one of the reasons why observatories are built in places very far from cities, such as the Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory, located in Chile, which is 80 kilometers from the nearest city, La Serena. If you are enjoying the video so far, we ask you to subscribe to the channel to receive more of our content and explore the universe of science. With that said, we move on to the video. When the first constellations were defined, most of them reflect aspects of culture and daily life of the societies that observed them. It is for this reason that different peoples had different constellations for the same night sky. Hence, we would like to propose an activity to encourage you to look at the night sky. Imagine that you are from a primitive society, 
and that you have just had the idea of cataloging the sky using drawings formed by the bright dots that appear during the night. Try to visualize images formed by the stars and name these figures. After that, try to compare with the current constellations. Realize how much the cultural difference between you and the people who designated the constellations in antiquity influenced your constellations to be different from theirs. Remember, the best way to learn about the constellations is observing the night sky and trying to find them. With that, we say goodbye and hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for your attention and may the knowledge guide you.